High levels of excess deaths remain in Australia and around the world in many countries, but new evidence suggests that the cause may be related to the long-term impacts of COVID mismanagement via lockdowns, not vaccine side effects as some experts have suspected. Excess mortality rates in Sweden, a country whose population is as COVID vaccinated as Australia and many others, are much lower. So this suggests the problem may be related to medium and long-term medical effects of mass lockdowns, which Sweden did not employ. In the third part of our pre-recorded discussion for this week's show, former UN Assistant General, General Secretary and ANU Professor Dr. Ramesh Thakur says an open and honest discussion and formal inquiries with wide terms of reference are now needed to truly understand the mistakes of the COVID era and what we must learn so as not to repeat them in the future. Excess deaths, where are we at yeah. now in Australia? It's been a while since we covered out on this on the show, but I'm... Well, I looked at it, uh, the most recent ABS data on that uh, published last month and the new one will come out uh, at the end of March. Covers the period January to November 2023 inclusive. And they show an excess death rate of just over 15,000. I think it's 15,114, uh, if I have my memory. It's certainly over 15,000, but that might be the exact number, which equates to 10.0% uh, compared to the baseline, which is an average of, uh, I think they might, might be using three years rather than five years. But whatever it is, excess deaths continue to be a problem. And if you combine that with Sweden, the low excess mortality in Sweden, that's very interesting because Sweden, of course, is a highly vaccinated country. So what this suggests is that more than vaccination, or rather than vaccination, it may be the longer term lockdown impacts that are still proving very damaging. Mm -hmm. The missed consultations, the damage to mental health, the developmental damage for young children, uh, the, the school closures, the depressions and mental health crises, uh, all these are showing up. Uh, and, and the missed uh, screenings and tests uh, that were put aside because we thought COVID was going to kill everyone, we ignored the others. Okay, so, so let's let's be really clear I mean, on that because a lot sorry. of people will will this excess death thing. Uh, you're saying there that, that Sweden had almost no excess deaths or far lower excess deaths than a lot of other countries, including right. Australia. Um, yeah yet they had a high vaccination rate or as high yeah. a vaccination rate voluntarily as we did with our mandate. Um, okay, so uh, it's not possibly then the vaccination that's causing the excess deaths or all of them. Um, we know out of that 15,000, about 9,000 can be explained. There's a little margin of error, but you're still talking about four, five, six thousand 6,000 deaths that we Quite cannot long. explain. Yeah. That's an extraordinary number. It is. Um, so what we need to do is put aside preconceptions from all sides yeah, and look at this seriously. You know, at the time we said from an abundance of cash and caution, they're going to do this because even one avoidable death is one death too many. Well, okay, now we have 15,000. So what is the mix of causes and effects that are producing this? Why are we so, uh, why do we lack any curiosity about finding out what driving that and what we can do about it. That's what we need to do, is examine, set up a credible and qualified team to look at it all and make recommendations. And that if that means saying we made mistakes and these are long-term impacts, accept that and prepare better for the next time. Well, this is so, where I think our leaders and our media stand condemned uh, for the yeah. way that they handled things in 2020, 2021, because it's incumbent upon the people that we elect to lead us, the adults in the room, to stand up, take responsibility, show the leadership and the intellect, the intellect, to think more in a more complex way rather than a super simplistic reactive way. And not only that, I, d I believe that they just played politics. They just hid behind. I think the setting up of the national cabinet was an attempt of the federal government to shift blame to the states. I think all of the state premiers abdicated responsibility when they shifted responsibility to their CHOs and dumped it on the medical uh, administrators, and then we saw the you know the the passing on of the buck there to others. Uh, it just never stopped. Nobody took ownership. Nobody took responsibility, and nobody led with the intellect to say to people, "Look, we have to look at these things in a complex way. There are many variables here, and we have to think clearly through them, and we have to be patient." 
It just didn't and happen. It's part it of our disaster. duty of care to the people of Australia that we examine what's going on and we come up with honest answers. Uh, it, it goes with the territory. If you're not prepared to do that, you should not even aspire to public office, uh, let alone be in the cabinet positions or be the premier or prime minister of state and country. But what the price is, what exactly the causes were and pathways were to lead to this and how we avoid this in the future. These are the important questions that need to be addressed. And the official inquiry that the prime minister has set up is not even going to address them. So that's going to be a complete farce. Also, the UK inquiry has been a little bit of a farce too, uh, Ramesh. A little Trump. bit is an <laughs> yeah. understatement. Yeah. So we're just not getting, we're not getting to the truth. The same gameplay is going on. They don't want the answers because the answers will lead to people having to take responsibility and that scares the living daylights out of them, no well, doubt. In the UK inquiry, what we have found out, which is interesting, is when it moved to Scotland and Wales, then we have had confirmed that they adopted certain COVID policies just to show themselves to be different from England without any basis in science. Things like th that seem to be common sense, like masking, social distancing, even lockdowns to a certain extent, the intuitive part of us says, yeah, that should work, right? That should stop yep. the spread. Um, are you saying that, it, it, that the evidence is that it didn't at all? It's, it's worse than that. I'm sorry, Damien. It yeah. was actually counterproductive and common sense will tell you why. Oh, no, I appreciate that it's counterproductive. I appreciate it had all sorts of side effects and we should never have done it on a cost. No, 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 not side effects. Not side effects. On its own terms, it was counterproductive. The most common site of transmission was the household. Oh. If a family living together, a family of six, let's say, instead of spending eight hours in the house, spent eight hours outside in the park and on the beach in the sunshine in Australia, fewer people would have been infected, fewer would have died of COVID. So even on its own terms, it was counterproductive. Forget even about if that. we were mixing with each other, even if people were mixing yeah. with other people. Yeah. Wow. Because it's an outro. You know, at one point in the mid-21, I remember a New York Times story that there has not been a single documented case of a COVID infection contracted outdoors. It didn't it take much for us to throw away our our liberties, and I hope those Australians that did throw away their liberties and who leapt to being the greatest dob artists in history are feeling truly, truly ashamed of themselves now and are deeply reflecting on the errors that they made and apologising to the people that they hurt and upset and will not and will commit to not doing this ever again. Uh, it really you was are a, a failure of our society. <laughs> You're not seeing that much. <laughs> not seeing a lot of remorse. I, I, um, I think they will justify it by saying we meant well and that excuse. Yeah, them. that's right. Did you like that content? Well, there's a lot more where that came from. It comes from a show called The Other Side, which we drop a new episode of every Friday night at 8 p.m. to get you across all the news of the week for the weekend. Get you smart for the weekend without the woke. So join us on ADH.TV or right here on YouTube. Hit that subscribe button. Watch full episodes here.